Oh, this is excellent, Don. I can see the, the drone, one of the operations that we had in uh, Israel, in Beersheba, during the Nama project uh, with uh, uh, Elsight and uh, our partners in Israel can do drones, uh, delivering uh, over uh, from a uh, supermarket back to the home base that we were testing uh, the connectivity, we were testing flying without uh, GPS, for example, in case it gets jammed. So this was very successful uh, operations that we had uh, carried over uh, the south of Israel uh, in March last year. That is awesome. And I think this is going to show like maybe the, the takeoff here. Or the delivery. Exactly. This was the delivery. The delivery. That's correct. It delivers the box uh, and then returns. Uh, Can you tell us a little about the hardware. You have like three different models, right? That's correct. Uh, Speedbird um, actually started in the U.S. As a matter of fact, with the plan to operate drones. So we went to the market back in 2015, trying to find uh, drones for delivery. We couldn't find them. You know, not the way that we wanted to do it. So we had to develop from scratch. Uh, you know, the drones that we started with our first drone called the LV1, obviously delivery one, um, and from uh, the first concepts that we, 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 we focus on always delivery. Our focus was 100% in logistics uh, from the hardware, then the software uh, to allow uh, the connectivities with our partners, um, not only the UTM, but also with our delivery partners and companies that we serve today. So the Dell V1 is the first one to receive uh, BVLOS type certification by a very well known uh, certification agency called ANAC, which has bilateral agreements with the FAA, with the ESA in Europe. Um, and, you know, as Brazil is also known for manufacturing of aircraft because of Embraer, the third largest aircraft manufacturer in civil aviation, uh, we uh, actually were able to do it here, do it, um, you know, economically feasibly, you know, and now we are operating and serving uh, multiple customers, not only in Brazil, and now supporting partnerships with companies like Can Do Aero and Israel, and then in the U.S. and uh, other parts of Latin America as well that we're very excited to start launching. Uh, from Brazil this week, we're going to Latin America, but the DLV1 was the first one to allow us to do that. Now, Manuel, was that the one that was in the video, or was it the larger DLV2? That's the first one. That's the one behind me here as well, and in the video. That, uh, it's a three-kilogram uh, payload. It's about two, two pounds, uh, I mean, five pounds, and, um, you know, three kilometers round trip. That's what is approved today to do complete debris loss uh, operations, right, um, at night as well. So we're the first ones to actually fly uh, beaver laws at night with... Uh, now we're actually looking for the uh, waivers to fly over people, uh, which will start actually this month. Uh, and then very soon, we're going to have a multi-drone uh, per pilot, right, per operator. So that's uh, actually... One, the one to at. many, I think it's M2N, or it's a really weird acronym that almost makes no sense. It's like backwards, but... Uh, <laughs> So the so the DLV two wh how is it different from the one is it you said it's it's bigger right like how so how many like uh, kilograms or pounds can it carry? Excellent. Uh, the DLV two is just an extension of the DLV one. It's an extra rotor as well that can fly with uh, you know five motors. So one goes down. We have redundancy, so we actually found it to be very efficient, um, and it carries up to eight kilograms of payload, and oh, wow. obviously has three times also the range uh, round trip. We'll talk about round trip. We can do one way, we can do multiple stops as well, but for urban deliveries, we believe that the uh, multi-rotor aircraft is actually the way to go, is much safer than the, the, the EVTOLs. Uh, we'll talk about the DLV-4 later, but uh, that's another uh, aircraft. Uh, the DLV-2 is for heavier cargo, uh, and our strategy was to keep it below 25 kilograms. Right? Why? Because certification, the, 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 the problem is not the aircraft, it's not the safety of the operations on the aircraft anymore. Uh, we have done this extensively uh, and matured the hardware uh, portion of the business. The question now is the integration of airspace, the connectivity, which we, we solved that problem with um, uh, LSight 
after we integrated with Outside. That was one of the major concerns of our regulators here, is how can you keep connectivity at all times with your drones doing the operations? Yeah, so that's a great, uh, great segue to pivot over to Yoav. I know we're gonna get the, to, to the DLV for, so hold my feet to the fire on that manual. But Yoav, let's talk about the connectivity solution because you all created Halo. And uh, for those that don't know about it, can you explain how Halo works and what exactly it is? Yeah, so it started um, way back that we understand that the connectivity issue, it's a big challenge for any operator or platform manufacturers because that's basically one of the paired part of the system. Any system that needs to be either remote controlled or autonomous, you need to have the command and control, the C2 link all, all, all across your mission. And we coming from a background, our background or LSI background is more in the defense and homeland security application where it's absolutely a crucial need to have a reliable communication or how we call it connection confidence. And then we started to look on what are the other markets we can affect. And we started to look on the un, uh, uncrewed industry in general and drone in specifically, um, understanding that we have a lot of value to unlock for the, again, for the operator and the system manufacturers or the platform manufacturers to, to unlock more value to their customers in the end of the day and to get to the full potential of this technology in general, speaking about, again, uncrewed and drawn um, in general. So taking just scratching the surface of what we're doing with the Halo, which at the end of the day, the platform that sits on the drone, it's in this side. So it's what I hold here in my hand. That's how it wow. looks like. That's what actually sits on the drone, which is that small. That's that, smaller than your palm. Oh yeah, absolutely. You can hold it like that. And there is different flavor of it, but basically what we're doing on this unit, we're multiplexing or we are um, aggregating multiple network concurrently. So that can be four different solar um, operator, for example, in the US that can be Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, US Cellular, Personet, you name it. Uh, we can add to that satellite communication, any kind of point-to-point -point communication, like any kind of RF proprietary communication. Uh, that can also be part of this aggregation um, mechanism, let's call it. And what we're creating, we're creating an agnostic level or an abstract layer on top of all those physical layers to create, again, the robustness or the reliability uh, communication that is required to complete any mission. And for our partners, like Speedbird, um, we provide it in a way that it will be completely transparent transparent for them. So it's not, re it's not required a lot of hard integration and maybe we'll talk about it, how we started work with the, with Speedbird and how fast we started to fly. But that's definitely something that it's pretty easy to integrate on the software level, let's call it, on the mechanical level, it's a question of room on the drone or on the platform and what you have there. Um, but basically it's pretty much um, plug and play and uh, give you again, the connection confidence that is required, like Manuel said, that's one of the major parts. Obviously, the drone must fly and you must have reliable and redundant systems on the drone, but communication is one of the major challenges that have when you're speaking about BVLOS operation in general, which can be both because of distance and because, like you said before, one to many, which that's what we're enabling in the end of the day. 